In this lesson, I would like to focus on weight transfer and in getting the right weight transfer to get your penalties more consistent. Much has been written and said about the swing mechanics, body posture, weight transfer, where to focus your vision, where to aim your horse, etc., etc., about taking penalties. But what I don't hear much about is using the most potent weight transfer of all, and that is the horse's weight transfer. With the best technique in the world, if you get this wrong, it will destroy your penalty taking. Remember that the swing is a three-beat swing, not a two-beat one. And by beat, I mean the landing of the horse's leading foreleg. If you look here, as I take you through frame by frame, there, as that leg lands, is the first beat. And you will see me start and set up my swing here, complete my backswing on the second beat, and make contact as the horse transfers its weight over that offside foreleg, so that at this point, it only has one foot on the ground and it's transferring its weight across that foot. If you get that timing wrong and you make contact as the horse's other leg lands on the ground, then you will see at this point that it has three legs on the ground and is gathering itself to make the next stride. So there is no real weight transfer from the horse at this point. If you look at all the great ball strikers in every sport, they all have a trigger movement that lets them complete the swing with rhythm. In polo, you have to have that trigger movement as well, and there are a variety of ways to do it. See here is Malcolm Boric, and his trigger movement is a pre-swing. The important thing, if you are going to take a pre-swing as a trigger movement, is that you've got to time the pre-swing as well as the swing. On the first beat of that three-beat swing, there is the horse's off four landing and the horse with three legs in the air transferring its weight across. Malcolm's mallet is exactly at his boot. So as the horse transfers its weight now, there you can see him going into the swing. It's landing a second time and while it's transferring its weight there, He's completing that backswing, which gives him time to do so. And as it lands with the off four for the third time, there you can see impact will be when it's got three legs in the air transferring its weight across that off four. So the horse's impetus here is helping him. But what makes him really good at taking penalty is that he uses the horse's rhythm to help him transfer his weight. So what then if you don't use a pre-swing? You have to find some way of finding a trigger movement that works for you. What I do is I just drop that mallet and put my weight onto my feet to get my body posture where I want it in the swing. There you can see as the horse's off four lands on the first of those three beats, I'm dropping onto my stirrups, my mallet is dropping, and as the horse transfers, so my mallet is Coming back, there's the second beat, there's the completion of the swing, and as the horse transfers its weight across that leg with three feet in the air, so it's transferring its weight to take the next stride, is impact. Just to compare the two different methods, on the stride, there's Malcolm's mallet at his boot as the horse is transferring its weight across that foreleg with three legs in the air. If you look on the left pane, there I am with that trigger movement. There you can see the bow in the mallet as it starts to lift as the horse is transferring itself across that leg. And you can see a very similar position of both horse with its stride almost exactly the same in both pictures and our mallets almost at identical places at this point. In this clip, what I've tried to show you is how if you get the little things wrong, then everything goes wrong in the swing. You will see here I've turned my feet out slightly, which throws my weight back so that I can't transfer my weight correctly. And you will also see that the horse is leading on a near fall. And because of that, I am counting my beats on the near side foreleg landing. So it's the leading leg. There's the trigger movement as the horse transfers its weight across 
the near side fore leg now, not the off side fore leg. There you can see my feet are slightly open, weight back too far. There's the second stride and transfer. And you will see now as the horse lands on the off fore, that is where contact should be as it's taking its stride across that leg. However, because it's leading on the wrong leg, there you will see contact is with the horse's near side foreleg on the ground. And because of that, the result will never be the same. Let's just take a look at a player here that has turned that three beat swing into a two beat one with a very similar result to the horse leading on the wrong leg. One of the things that I don't like is a very long pre-swing like this because then it makes it very difficult to time your pre-swing. I would much rather that he had not taken his mallet further back than that because from there the timing of the full swing of that pre-swing is so much easier. There you can see him coming in and the horse coming in for the first stride of that three beat swing. There's the four leg landing and the transfer happening now and you can see at this point that his mallet is not at his boot, it is way behind him. So by the time the mallet reaches the boot, that horse will already have transferred across that leg and be landing on the other leg as if it was leading on the near fore. There you can see now the horse is landing and the mallet is approximately at the player's boot, so he's already too late now. There's the second beat and the horse transferring its weight. And there's the third beat and he's still in the back swing and not already making the swing at impact. So here you can see the horse is already transferred and there is impact happening with three legs on the ground. So the horse's transfer has already happened and it's now gathering itself to get into the next stride so there is no transfer really. In conclusion, let's just look at a few more high goal player swings. Here you can see high goaler James Byam coming in to take a penalty. And there you can see that limited back swing there's the horse's stride on the off four, mallet passing his boot. The completion of the backswing in the second transfer across that leg. Swing completed and the downswing and impact happening as the horse transfers its weight again across the off four. If you look here at Sapoka Set, you will see a pretty similar thing. There's a mallet passing his boot as the horse is transferring its weight on the first stride. Going into the backswing on the second stride. and the downswing and contact as the horse is transferring its weight across that off four. If you look at legendary Miguel Navija Strada here, who's one of the best players in the world, he has a slightly different trigger movement. He takes a pre-swing, but he holds his mallet further down than I do to start with. There you can see the first stride, his mallet is down, and that is his trigger movement. And as the horse reaches forward now, everything else is exactly the same as what I've been describing. There's the back swing as the horse transfers its weight across that off four. Completed swing, down swing happening as that foot lands next to the ball and impact. there with the horse's three legs in the air transferring its weight across the off four.